Imagine being able to see the very first stars that ever shone in the universe. Stars that were born out of pure hydrogen and helium, with no trace of any other elements. Stars that were so massive and bright that they could outshine entire galaxies. Stars that lived fast and died young, leaving behind the seeds of new generations of stars and planets. These are the stars that we call Population 3, or POP3 for short, and they are the ultimate reclusive pop stars of the cosmos. But what if I told you that we have just made a breakthrough in finding these elusive stars? That's right, we have a new discovery to share with you, and it's a game changer for our understanding of the early universe. In this video, we will explore the amazing story of POP3 stars, from their birth in the dark ages of the universe, to their detection with the most powerful telescope ever built, the James Webb Space Telescope. We will also learn about their role in shaping the evolution of galaxies and life as we know it. How did they form? How did they die? How did they change the universe forever? And how did we finally find them? These are some of the questions that we will answer in this video. So buckle up and get ready for a journey to the dawn of time, where the first stars await us. To understand POP3 stars, we need to go back to the very beginning of the universe, about 13.8 billion years ago. That's a mind-blowing amount of time, and for most of it, there was nothing but darkness in the universe. But how did this darkness end, and how did the first stars come to be? According to our theories, the universe started with a huge explosion, called the Big Bang, and then it grew bigger and colder very fast. For a long time, the universe was like a thick fog of tiny particles that bounced off each other all the time. This fog was so dense that light could not travel very far. This is why we call this period the Cosmic Dark Ages. But as the universe grew bigger, the fog became thinner and cooler until it reached a point where particles could stick together and form atoms. The most common atom was hydrogen. There was also some helium and a tiny bit of lithium. These were the only elements that existed in the early universe. When atoms formed, they let go of light that could finally travel freely across space. This light is still around today, and we can see it as a faint glow in every direction. This glow shows us tiny differences in temperature and density that were caused by random fluctuations in the early universe. These fluctuations were like seeds that grew into bigger structures over time. Under the influence of gravity, regions with more matter started to clump together and form blobs of matter, mostly dark matter, which is a mysterious substance that we can't see, but we know it's there because it has gravity. These blobs pulled more matter towards them, including normal matter made of hydrogen and helium. Within these blobs, normal matter was squeezed and heated by gravity until it became hot enough to start a fire inside atoms. This fire is called nuclear fusion, and it is what makes stars shine. This is how the first stars were born, about 100 million years after the Big Bang. But what were these stars like? How big were they? How bright were they? And how long did they live? You might be surprised by the answers. These stars were very different from the stars we see today. They had no metals in them, because metals are elements heavier than helium that are made by stars or explosions. They also had very big sizes up to 300 times bigger than our sun. These huge stars had very short lives, only a few million years at most, because they used up their fuel very quickly. They also had very bright lights, up to a million times brighter than our sun. They gave off light that could break apart atoms into particles again. This is how they turned hydrogen atoms into ionized gas around them. These bubbles grew bigger as more stars formed and joined together, eventually filling up most of the space between galaxies. This is how the universe was lit up by POP3 stars, ending the cosmic dark ages. So now we have an idea of how the POP3 stars formed and what they did to the universe. But how can we find them today? And what can they tell us about our origins? That's what we will explore in the next sections. One of the most distant galaxies ever observed is called GNZ 11. It is located about 13.4 billion light years away from us, which means that we see it as it was when the universe was only 400 million years old, or about 3% of its current age. This galaxy is very small compared to modern galaxies like our Milky Way. It has a diameter of only about 3,000 light years and a mass of only about 1 billion times that of our Sun. It also has a very low metallicity, only about 1% that of our Sun. But what makes this galaxy special 
is that it is one of the best candidates for hosting POP3 stars. This is because it has a very high star formation rate, about 20 times higher than our Milky Way today. It also has a very high ultraviolet luminosity, which indicates that it contains very hot and massive stars. And it has a very low oxygen abundance, which suggests that it has not been enriched by many supernova explosions yet. How did this galaxy form so early in the universe? The most likely scenario is that it was the result of a merger of several smaller galaxies that formed in the same dark matter halo. These smaller galaxies were probably the first sites of POP3 star formation, and they triggered a chain reaction of star formation in the larger galaxy. As more stars formed, they also produced more metals, which gradually changed the composition of the gas and the nature of the stars. This is how POP3 stars gave way to POP2 stars, which are older stars with low metallicity, and then to POP1 stars, which are younger stars with high metallicity. But how can we tell if GNZ 11 still contains POP3 stars or not? To answer this question, we need to look at its spectrum, which is the distribution of light by wavelength. By analyzing the spectrum of a galaxy, we can learn about its chemical composition, temperature, age, and distance. But to do this, we need a very powerful telescope that can collect enough light from such a faint and distant object. One of the main goals of James Webb Space Telescope is to find and study POP3 stars. To do this, it uses a technique called spectroscopy, which splits light into its component colors and measures their intensity. By comparing the spectrum of a galaxy with theoretical models, Astronomers can infer its properties and identify its stellar populations. For example, one of the key signatures of POP3 stars is the presence of strong helium lines in their spectrum. This is because helium is one of the main products of hydrogen fusion in massive stars, and it is not diluted by metals as in later generations of stars. Using this technique, a team of astronomers led by Professor Raffaella Maialino from Cambridge University claimed to have found evidence of POP3 stars in GNZ 11. They used JWST to observe a region near the galaxy that was magnified by gravitational lensing. This is a phenomenon where light from a distant object is bent and amplified by the gravity of a closer object along the line of sight. In this case, the closer object was another galaxy about 3 billion light years away from us. By analyzing the spectrum of this region, they found strong helium lines that could not be explained by POP2 or POP1 stars alone. They also found weak oxygen lines that indicated a very low metallicity. They concluded that these features were consistent with POP3 stars contributing about 10% to 20% of the total light from GNZ 11. This would imply that POP3 stars were still forming in this galaxy when it was about 400 million years old. If confirmed by further observations, this discovery would be a major breakthrough in our understanding of the first stars in the universe. It would also open up new possibilities for studying their properties and their impact on their surroundings. For example, we could learn more about how they influenced the reionization process, how they enriched their host galaxies with metals, how they produced gravitational waves when they collapsed into black holes, and how they seeded future generations of stars and planets but finding POP3 stars is not easy. They are very rare and faint, and they are hidden behind billions of light years of intervening matter. To detect them, we need to use sophisticated techniques and instruments that push the limits of our technology and ingenuity. We also need to be lucky enough to find favorable conditions that enhance their visibility, such as gravitational lensing or nearby supernova explosions. We hope you enjoyed this video and learned something new. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon to stay updated with the latest news and discoveries in science. Thank you for watching and see you next time.